back in the shop. Do you ever hear the expression, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence? Well, I looked over the fence, and the fence was in Tennessee. I put the place up for sale, and I've sold the old homestead, and I'm going to have to say goodbye to my shop. And I'm going to build a cabin on a piece of land down south of me. But before I go, I wanted to try to build one more fiddle that I had promised myself I would build. Look at this. Normally there's a motorcycle sitting there. This is a wood airplane. It's a Fisher Horizon. Tandem two-seat. One sits behind the other. I gotta put this project on hold now as we're packing up. And the shop's a big mess, but over here on the workbench is the focus of my attention. A friend of mine gave me this piece of wood. It's a piece of locust wood. It has kind of a pretty pinkish hue to it. I resawed it, glued it together. I've got a piece here laid out for the neck. And then this here, this is the last of two pieces of spruce I have from a tree that fell down in the backyard. I got the glue heating up in my wife's mini crock pot, and I am going to set off on a quest to build a locust wood fiddle before I have to get out of here. Here is a little tip for me. When I'm cutting up parts for future violins, I make up little violin kits, corner blocks, and the end blocks, and I've got one right here. It's all ready to go, and then all I have to do is get them glued onto my form. It gives me a little head start. I already have uh, fingerboards selected, and I can start getting that down where I want it to be. And I can do little odds and ends while I'm waiting for the glue to dry. Blocks are gluing. Now we're going to need sides. It will need linings. Last time I built a fiddle, I made some extra willow linings. Those are ready. This is a future base bar ready to go. Here's size. Look at that. I have made a few extra. When I have a piece of wood and the saw set up just right, I go to town. Maple, walnut, all kinds of stuff. But I do have this piece of locust wood. Barely thick enough. So what I'm doing is setting up my thin strip jig. It's kind of a neat little gadget. And it allows me to saw off real thin pieces with the table saw. Yes, it wastes a lot of material. This time, I just don't care. I won't use the band saw. Okay, so here's a piece of the locust wood. We'll put a mic on it here. Looks like a 1.43. I want one. Nice and flexible. See how it bends when I put the heat to it. Well, I'll go cut off some more and then we'll scrape these down and smooth them out. I have my corner blocks done. I have them all shaped the way I want. Notice the direction of the grain, if you'd like. And then these blocks surrounding it are my clamping blocks. I started with my C-bout already. And I have to say this locust wood bends really nice. Very happy. This is my little setup for bending the wood. This is my uh, Wagner heat gun. We flick it on. I already preheated it. Full of water. 
piece of locust wood. Trial and error, you kind of heat and bend. See how she looks. The heat heats up the water and steams the wood, makes it soft, and once it cools, it holds its shape really well. Anything much thicker than a millimeter is going to be really hard to bend. I have done it, but it's not pleasant. More time, more patience. These are pretty sharp bends. We want to get the seed belt to fit nice and snug in there without a lot of moving around. Not bad. Right there, it's pretty good. So as you can see, you want it to fit fairly nice, and then I've pre-prepared little blocks that I'll fit in there, just like that, to help me glue it up. Can you hear that? It's quiet. It's night, I've been busy working today, getting ready to move. I finished up installing a trailer hitch. Wiring harness was wrong though, I gotta get something different tomorrow. So I'm trying to steal a few moments away to work on my farewell fiddle. This is the garland, the sides. They're done and I put the linings on today, the willow. And here's my back, and I got it cut to shape. I use that as the pattern to trace it. And you'll notice my funny edges here. I'll show you. This disaster is my kind of secret weapon. My old router. I think I bought that when I was 17. So I spin her up with this blade, and I run around the edge just like this. And what that does is it gives me a five millimeter edge to start working on. And then I work off that five millimeter edge and I'll actually get it down to about four. But I gotta tell you, locust wood is hard to carve. I'm telling you right now, it is not for the faint of heart. This is not some, look at that. Not some nice, soft piece of maple. Yeah, I mean, comes out all right. Man, I put a razor's edge on this gouge. This is some stiff, stiff stuff. Kind of like the oak. The one nice thing about it is the scraper works really good on it. Look at that. Oh. It's going to take a while, but therapy. The scraper works good and the uh, little thumb planes, they kind of like it. Uh, they go right along nice. I got a little farther. I stayed up much too late last night. It was about quarter after midnight when I came in. I kept picking away at that piece of locust wood. You can see it in the light. It's pretty close to where it's going to be. It wasn't that bad once I got it roughed out. Um, this harder wood I found, just like the oak, these little finger planes, they do a nice job. And I even put this one to it. I got this at a antique shop and it works wonderful. So I'm close. I'm close enough to cut my purfling groove. And then I um, got the old piece of spruce here and I've got it cut out to shape and I'll give you a peek at my little violin hack 
show you. Well, here's my little violin hack. This is my old router I mentioned. This here is a little bit that uh, normally would cut a, um, a groove, I would say. Probably has a name. Don't know what it is. I'm going to fire it up. It's going to be noisy. Chips will fly, but you'll see my little hack. And what I'm doing is I'm giving myself an even edge to work off of. I want about 5 millimeter, and I'm going to finish it down to 4. Check this out. See what I've done? Gives me an even thickness, right? And then I can work off of that with my um, gouge. I'll work my way around here. And it's just a, a nice way to have an even edge and not spend a lot of time trying to do that by hand. So with this in my little jig, it takes a lot of the pressure off for me trying to hang on to it. As long as I'm generally working this way or across, it's stable as a rock. And this antique gouge I've got just cuts beautiful. And look at the difference between doing the locust wood earlier and all the force I had to put on it. And um, I ended up having to go diagonal to the grain and with the grain in some areas because it was so tough. But look at the spruce. It's like butter. A child could do this. Now, tries to shimmy off, I just grab a, a DeWalt clamp I got here and clamp her down and she didn't go anywhere. So let me get to work and get a little farther along. Here we are uh, a few minutes later. 10, 15 minutes. Maybe, maybe not even. Kind of ugly looking. Now we go to this thumb plane. You gotta be a little more careful about going with the grain. The harder wood, even the maple, is more forgiving. You can go um, confidently across it like I am here. Grain's going this way. Um, sometimes on the spruce, it's a little chippy like that. So you want to be careful. We don't want to leave marks that we can't get out later. Um, one thing I do is I usually have this glove on. Get awful blisters right here. I don't think I'll ever do it long enough to get like calluses there. So I just wear one of these cheap dollar store work gloves and work my way around. I guess I start off with smoothing out the overall shape. I work on a little plateau around the edge, to run the perimeter, and I kind of use the light down low like this to get a good look at it. And then I'll go to the smaller finger plane for little areas in the sea bouts. And I even use this one here, this larger one, for areas down here. And this is the enjoyable part, the carving. And it's not difficult, you just have to jump in. And that's about all the tools. One gouge, this one here, um, the three planes, and then I've got a couple of scrapers we'll use to finish it off lastly. And that's about all there is to it, and just a little bit of patience. Now i got to take off my glove again. So here's the belly plate, just about done. I finished the planing and we've scraped it quite a bit and it's pretty close to the finished shape what's left now is the purfling and you can see we hold the light down low and kind of get a look at the shadows and watch if I go slow you can see imperfections in this yep we'll work those out alright so I've got it marked up now I don't know if you can see 
I've got some pencil marks here just for a guide. I am going to set up my little purfling groove cutter, which looks like this. It's homemade. That's the bottom. And my Dremel tool just mounts in here. And I'm going to cut a purfling groove. Get the back plate set up. We'll get the purfling in. And then we'll be moving on to hollowing out the inside. It's another late night. Sneaking in a few minutes here and there to work on my farewell fiddle. My last violin I'll make in New Hampshire. And it's nice and dark. and The crickets are singing. I hear my daughter singing too. We're outside here. Hear her singing? All right, well, I gotta say goodbye for now. And in our next video, we'll get the purfling done. We'll finish up these plates, get a base bar in. I gotta make a trip to Tennessee and back, and hopefully squirrel away enough minutes to finish a violin before I have to say goodbye to New Hampshire. See you next time.